I didn't show up on that slide when I. I'm sure there are some questions here. Uh, any questions before we. Yes, Tim. You showed the slide with observations and model. I'm sorry, observations. Three or four slides before this last one, you showed the model and that's it. That? Okay. Now, when I do physics, the model comes out to be very smooth, and the observations are always jagged. There's always noise. Now, in your case, you've managed to switch the two. I'd like to know how. <laughs> well, uh, it is a good trick, and I can't reveal all of my secrets to you here today with we'll Umran present. But uh, <laughs> the fact that the observations are smooth is the, as a result of our having fit a fourth order model to the observations. So this is a graph of, of, of probability versus the zero, first, second, third, and fourth uh, power of the plasma pause extent. So it is necessarily a fourth order function. The observations consist of a few discrete or ray tracing um, experiments done at discrete plasma pause extents. If I wanted to make this smoother, I could have uh, wasted a lot more CPU time and had more points in between them. But it's the result of a few discrete experiments that you see here. OK, one more question if I may. Sure. You talked about damping of the waves. What causes the damping? Uh, the damping is a result of an interaction of the waves with warm plasma particles. Which the is Landau damping? Uh, yes. Yeah. Landau damping. Cyclotron damping as well? Cyclotron damping is a minor uh, constituent to the damping of waves in the magnetosphere, and we have not modeled here. OK, thank you. Please. I have a, a question about the motivation for the work about these radiation bands being bad news for humans and satellites. Um, exactly, radiation belts. Um, what, at the end, you know, the result of this kind of research, if we, you, know, you knew exactly where they are and all your detectors work, what's the goal? Is, is the goal just to know where they are so you can avoid them, or is there some big picture of, you know, you could modify them, or what's, what's the goal for once you know where these things are? There are researchers, researchers in the group who talk about modifying them, being uh, funded, no surprise, by the Department of Defense. <laughs> Uh, that's not necessarily my goal here, but uh, it's important to understand what creates the radiation belts and how their structure is modified, because in particular, during large geomagnetic storms, the radiation belt structure can change significantly. So knowing how that is, say, expected to change as a result of interactions with these waves will help us sort of, um, A, know where to put satellites, and uh, B, I think some satellites have mechanisms of turning themselves off when they expect an influx of particles, and understanding how those particles change will help make those decisions. Well, those humans are in trouble anyway. Up in our baby eye away from the nearest spacecraft. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the first case. <laughs> There's been a long history of interest, not only in chorus, but in the Hiss phenomenon, people trying to get a better understanding of how it propagates or why or why, why it isn't, or maybe is seen on the ground, and in what, how to categorize it. Were you able to do any equivalent study, uh, somewhat in any way equivalent to what you did with Chorus with the, with the Hiss uh, phenomenon? I haven't performed that study, but I think uh, given that the database that I created using the automated detector includes both Chorus and Hiss emissions, it would be straightforward using the same techniques to perform a similar study. But no, I have not performed a study of my own. Do you recommend it for the next student? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> strongly recommend it for the next student. Any other questions? Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, Landau damping. Yep. <laughs> what model did you use for the thermal particles? It was a, a, a model of particles measured in situ from the Crest satellite. You might be familiar with it from Meredith's papers, and I believe Jake Fortnick has uh, published a few on it. So it's measurements of the warm plasma particles from the Crest satellite. Uh, excuse me, that's uh, for the particles outside plasma pods. And you'll be satisfied to know that I used your paper in 2002 for warm plasma particles within the plasma sphere. I wasn't aiming to have you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Happy coincidence. Any other? Please. Yeah, Dan. Um, I was curious. Are there any other detection stations besides the one in Antarctica? Oh my, are there ever. Um, unfortunately, I have the task of maintaining a lot of our group servers and uh, the mechanisms by which we get data from these sites, although certainly not all of those mechanisms. And uh, I just actually looked on a spreadsheet uh, that I 
look at sometimes uh, before I gave this talk, and I think I counted over a hundred different stations in varying degrees of operability, which are working around the globe today. So could you apply your neural network technique to data from these other stations to build a larger picture? Of you definitely could, and that's another idea for future work for another student. <laughs> <laughs> there are some significant differences, especially with respect to the L shell of the station, for what types of emissions they'll observe. And in general, you would probably have to do some more manual training, which involved that, like those calipers, keep your eyes open and such. But uh, certainly the algorithm and the technique could be applied to these other stations, yes. Any other? Uh, Don, could you just say a few words about the special virtues of the ray tracing program that you use? I'd love to. So uh, the ray tracing program, uh, which appears in some form, I could go to this slide. It makes it more interesting. Let's go with that one. So the, the ray tracing program uh, that I used was developed uh, by one of the current students here at Forrest and was a, a really a, a ground up uh, development which was an improvement over an old ray tracer we had. If you look at this lovely model of the plasma density where you see a lot of crazy things going on, it can vary smoothly, I can change it easily. These were not possible with the old ray tracer so I'm certainly indebted a lot to the, the development of the new ray tracer by Forrest. It's also very extensible and uh, can be used to model kits as well as chorus, I've heard. Okay, so we now need to get serious and scrutinize this work without the grandma and ma present. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll take a five minute break and you can consume the goods and then we'll start again. Thank very you very much.